Bonjour à tous, hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today we have another dashcam. Some people uh, enjoy my previous dashcam video. So I took a new one. This time it's the M Rolic. Uh, here we go, 4K S10. That's the model S10. It's a 4K dashcam. So I wanted to try it out and see how it performs compared to the previous dashcam that I've already reviewed. So what's in the box and how it works? It's right now. M Rolink S10 car dashcam. Let's see what's inside the box. It's right now. And before even opening the box, we do have a thanks with some explanation here in case if you encounter some issue. So that's great. This is not on any other dashcam that I reviewed. So that's definitely a great touch from the manufacturer. Of course, first in the box, we do have the user manual. Then we have here the camera itself, the main camera. A little bit of reveal time here and ta-da! That's all the main camera looks like. Then we have an accessory box with some goodie inside. For now, we put it on the side to find out what is this last mysterious little box here. That's all for the main box. So here we do have a few goodies starting by a micro SD card reader. So that's great, and it's an adapter to adapt your micro SD card from the dashcam to your computer with a normal USB. It comes also with some cable management, 3M style cable management clip here. So that's great also. Here we do have one of those pin, metallic push pin to be able to reset the camera if needed. There is a little hole on the dashcam and then you can access it with this little metallic pin. Usually we saw the same system, the same pin on cell phone to be able to eject the SIM card. So it's the same principle. And of course, some fiber cloths here to clean the lenses and the screen of your dashcam. And that's all for this bag of goodies. Next, we have here a USB to USB-C cable, so that's great, because that means the dashcam is USB-C, not micro USB, it uses the better, more modern connectivity with USB-C. And look at that, it's not all the dashcam that have that, sometimes you have to buy them separately, but this one comes with one of those plastic prying tool that allows you to pass the cable behind all your car plastic and rubber and everything and central console and all that. So this tool is usually very useful when you install your dashcam in your car. And I'm very really pleased to see it included with this one. And of course, the cigarette plug USB power block. It has two USB plug, actually. Here we go. Five volt, five amp. So two ports. That means uh, if you use one uh, for the dashcam, then you have another one free to use to recharge your phone or your tablets. This gives you this possibility. So that's great. Usually they only have one and also sometimes it's proprietary. That means this plug has just a cable coming out of it and does not have any USB port on it. So some of the models are more annoying to use because of that. This one is just a basic cigarette plug to USB. Also, that means if uh, this dies for some reason, you can replace it very easily versus the one that are proprietary. And then you have to order directly a replacement from the manufacturer. You cannot just like buy like this one on Amazon a replacement. So that's another great point right there on this dash cam. I like it. And that's all for this box. Now for the other accessory box, let's see what we have. All right, first we do have a suction cup that will allow you to mount the main camera on the windshield. So here we go. Suction cup that appear to come with the GPS, uh, here we go, GPS module. So the GPS module is outside the dash cam. It's not included in the dash cam, it's in this suction cup, which could be useful. Then we have the rear camera here with this cable and of course some mounting hardware here along with the, some uh, sticky pad. And of course, the main cable that goes from the power block that will be plugged in the cigarette plug of the car back all the way to the camera. And of course, it uses USB-C as well. And that's all for this box. Now let's have a closer look of the camera, the main dash cam itself. 
Here you have, of course, 4K. It says it's uh, recording 4K. We are going to find out about that soon because there is a lot of camera on the market that claim they record in 4K, but actually it's just a little bit enhanced uh, HD and that's all. So we are going to check about that one. Here we do have some air vents, which are very important for camera that stay inside the car under the heat. Of course, the lens, which is a little bit uh, unusual, as you can see here. It's like a big square sticking out of the main body, protected by this uh, plastic. I'm going to remove it before to install the camera, but for now, I leave it on to avoid damaging the lens. On the top of the camera, we have some uh, contactor here, which will actually allow you to place the camera and remove it without having to remove the suction cup all the time. That's a great feature I like on the those dash cam that have this contact here and ability to remove the dash cam from the car when you are not there. If you are in the area where all the cars get brought in often because people steal devices like that, at least with this system, you will be able to remove it from the suction cup and then you will not be tempting all those bad guys out there to steal your expensive equipment. So I like this system, the quick connect system for removing the dash cam when not in use. On the top here, let's flip the camera quickly. We do have the USB-C for the power, the port here. The AV port will be for the rear camera plug. So you plug the rear camera right here. And here we have the power button. In the back, we have the screen, the main screen also protected by a plastic that you will have to peel off before to use the camera. And there is a button here that we probably use to save a video. When you see something happening, you probably have to press this button and then the segment will be saved in the micro SD card without being deleted or overwritten like these cameras always do. Usually we do the dash cam. Once the micro SD card is full, then it will start from the beginning and overwrite the previous data. So saving the video with this button will avoid that to happen. And on the bottom of the camera, that's where we have the menu button here with the arrow left and right, the M button for menu, and then the OK button. And here, this tiny little hole is the microphone because this dash cam is also able to record the audio. And now on this side, where it says TF, that's where the micro SD card is. So you will have to push up with your nail and then remove the micro SD card and it's included with the camera. <laughs> That's also great. Often this camera does not come with the, the micro SD card. You have to buy it yourself. But this one comes with the 64 gig micro SD card from the same brand than the dash cam. And here next to the menu button, the R little hole with the R next to it, it's the reset hole. So that's where you will have to use this little metallic pin to reset the camera. Here we go. That's all that was included with this dash cam system. So the main dash cam, of course, followed by the GPS slash suction cup, then the USB-C to USB power cable, the rear camera with its cable and mounting hardware, the bag of goodies, normal USB to USB-C cable to connect the camera to your computer, the plastic prying tool, and the cigarette plug power block here with USB port to USB port on the top. And that's all that was included with this dash cam. Now let's set up everything and test it out. Okay, as you can see here, I plugged everything in my test bench. Remember guys, before to spend a lot of time and effort to mount your dash cam into your car and then find out at the end that it's not working, always test it first on the bench like that if possible. Be sure that everything works as expected and then you can mount it on your car. As for this one, let's find out if it works and let's find out what the settings are all about. Here we go. Power it on now.
and the camera just turned on. So that's the first setting, that's the first screen we see right there. I like the quality of the screen actually. It's a nice rectangular screen and the image already right on the screen, it's very sharp. So that's great right there. I like this already. On the top left corner, we see that it says 4K 1080p, which means the main camera will be recording in 4K and then the rear camera will be recording in 1080p. Right at power up, it starts recording, which is normal because when you start your car, you want the camera to start recording, which it does right there. So it starts to indicate here the second accounting with the red dot blinking. And then of course, I will have to, to uh, set up the time and the date on the setting menu. On the top left here, I will have my uh, screen, picture-in-picture uh, -picture screen of the rear camera. And this main screen will show the main camera where the main camera is pointing at. And here we go. Let me de demonstrate that's the rear camera. Here we go, which is inverted right now, but don't worry about that. On the setting, you can totally change that if you want. Normally, the camera will be mounted actually like so, upside down on your windshield. So that will be already perfect. But if you mount it straight, then you will have to modify this orientation in the dashcam setting. And about the menu of the camera, here it is, the dashcam menu, which you can browse using the arrow here and the OK button right under the dashcam. So arrow left and right, you can just select different part of the menu and arrow right, here we go. Again, as you saw, once you reach the end of the menu or the beginning, up it goes back to the end of the previous menu. So that's good to know. The OK button will be your OK here that is on the screen, as you can see. And the back button will be the actually M button will be your back button. Now that you know all this, let's dig in the menu. So first we do have app. Let's select that. So here, if you want to download the app that goes with the camera, you will be able then to stream the video from the dashcam to the app and also control some more setting with the app. Here is a QR code. You scan it and then you can download the app on your phone. Second menu, it's the resolution. You have different choices, 4K 1080, 2K 1080 or 1080 and 1080. So it's up to you. I have a 4K camera. <laughs> you spend money on the 4K camera, you want the 4K, so I will keep the first selection. Then here next uh, menu is the loop recording. Loop recording here will uh, ask you how many minutes you want your video segment to be. So one minute, two minutes or three minutes. It will just save the video in a different segment in function of what you selected here. So one minute will be a lot of one minute video if you drive a few hours. Two minutes will be a little bit better and three minutes will be even better for the amount of video you have to browse through if you want at the end of the drive. So usually I select the longest. So I put three minutes. Next menu, it's, here we go, WDR, which means wide dynamic range. It enhances the quality of the picture and the color, especially with the white and the darkest area in the image. So I advise you to leave it on or to select on if it was not selected and go to the next setting, which is audio. Do you want the dash cam to record the audio? Always, you never know, someone uh, says something bad to you <laughs> after the accident. You may want to have that recorded for law enforcement. So audio on. G sensor, that means if uh, the camera shakes a lot, that means it detects an accident, an impact. And that's the sensitivity of this uh, sensor. So G force sensor, basically G sensor. You can turn it off if your camera keep recording for no reason. That means even in the low setting, it's too sensitive. Or you can select low, medium or high, depending on how you drive. And of course, your car suspension. Again, you don't want this camera to shake too much, to trigger one of those uh, automatic recording in case of accident. For now, I'm leaving it to medium and I will see how the camera behave. Next will be the parking monitor. This only works with the hardwire kit. You need to hardwire this dash cam to your car for that to work because the dash cam need power for the parking monitor to work. If you shut off your car power, your ignition, and then this cable over there lose power, 
the parking monitor will not work. So keep that in mind if you want to use this functionality. For me, I leave it off for now. I do not have a hardwire kit. Next, it's interesting uh, functionality of this camera that I haven't seen in other dash cams so far is the fatigue driving. It is off right now. I will have to dig a little bit into this uh, setting because uh, like I said, I haven't seen it in other dash cam, but I believe like you can set it for one hour, two hours, three hours. The dash cam will warn you if you drive more than one hour, two hours or three hours, depending on the setting here, and will tell you that you drive too long, so you need to rest. Anyway, back to other setting. Here is the area where we can set the date and the time. So I'm going to do that right now. Back to the setting screen. Here is the stamp. That means the OSD on-screen display, what you want to see. If you want to see the logo of the camera, if you want to see the time, if you want to see the position, the GPS position, if you want to see your speed, or if you want to see nothing, just the main image, then you can turn everything off. I will myself deselect logo, I don't care about that. And the time, yes, position, maybe not, but speed, definitely. And here we go. Back to the setting. Next, speed, because we are there. So you choose if you want in miles or kilometer hour. Here, miles, we are in the US, so I will keep miles. Next, GPS. Here we go, it has to be enabled. So now it's testing the GPS. So this section is just to test the GPS, if it works or not. And it will let you know if it works. Of course, I'm indoor right now in my studio. So it should not work well or will not work at all. So I will skip this step for now. But I will definitely try that outside. And here we go. That's the setting that uh, I was telling you about. If you want to uh, mirror the rear camera. So that's right there. It's off right now because I'm going to mount it upside down. But here you can switch here the image in this menu. And the same related setting. If you want mirror flip, here we go. You can flip the image here as well. It's on because right now it's flipped upside down and everything should be all right. But depending on your installation, you may want to mess with this setting and the previous setting. Next one, auto Wi-Fi. So now the camera is broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal to connect to your phone. If you have the app installed in your phone, you can leave that on. I don't have the app for now. And it's just to test the dash cam. So I'm going to, to click off. That will also save some of the battery when the camera will not be connected. Keep in mind though that the battery is just to keep the time in memory and save your last recorded video when you turn off the car ignition, but it will not make the camera run on its own to record everything while on battery. The battery are very limited application. Next, screensaver. So it's off right now and you can select 10 seconds, 30 seconds or two minutes. It's uh, how long uh, the screen will stay on after the camera turn on. So if you don't want to see the screen or if you want maybe to avoid uh, screen burnouts <laughs> when you have information on the screen display all the time, maybe it may damage the screen. So you want to save the screen. That's why you have a screen saver. So you select here how long you want the screen to be on before it shut off. So let's put uh, about uh, two minutes. So for testing will be perfect. And then, okay, here. Here, the language, self-explanative. No much to say about that. Next, time format, here we go. For the people who do not like the 24 hours, you can select 12 hours here and then you will get your AM and PM right there back uh, on the screen. So here you go. You have the option. See, I didn't even know that it existed. It's right there, but I leave it in 24 hours. I prefer that. Day saving time. If you uh, want the camera to automatically adjust day saving time, you can turn that on. on otherwise, you leave it at off. I prefer to 
set the camera myself so when it's automatic sometimes it's not always uh, accurate so i will do it myself i leave that at off and frequency if you are in the us it's advised to put 60 hertz here which i just did and here we go that's for your camera frequency time here is the setting to help the automatic uh, day saving uh, time here it asks you what's the time zone so we are pacific time here pacific time here we go and i will select that next if you like the annoying beep, <laughs> beep, beep, beep all the time you leave that at on if not you can shut it off here we go power sound so that means when the camera turns on you have this little tingling sound that turn on if you don't like that again you can shut it off here format here we go it's where you can format your macro sd card all data will be deleted of course so i will confirm again with ok and now it format the macro sd card and it's good to go once it's done it's going to go back to the main screen and then again start recording so be careful with that it will not come back in the main menu you will have to go to the main menu yourself pressing the m button here and now we are back to the menu next car speed so it just analyzes the speed of the micro sd card see if it's compatible with the dash cam and then i have a green uh, flag letting me letting me know that the card is all good to go which is uh, normal it's the included card with the camera so i'm all good to go with that but in case if you buy a third party micro sd card you can test the speed here the compatibility with the dash cam right there on this menu that's also something i haven't seen in other dash cam so i find that very nice of them to have put this uh, macro sd card test in this dash cam i don't count the time where people claim that their dash cam is not working and all the problem is just due to the macro sd card that is not compatible or not fast enough to run with the dash cam and if you messed up too much setting here you can uh, put everything in default setting which I will not do, <laughs> but it's right there. And of course, you have the dashcam version right here. In case if you have any issue, you may have to uh, update the firmware. And here is the firmware version installed in the dashcam. And that should conclude everything back to the main menu, everything at the setting. And as soon as you go back here on the main screen, the camera will start recording again. And all those little icons let you know what's going on. So you press any button, the icon will show up for a few seconds and then they will disappear, all depending on your setting. Here, the little icons uh, are a bit self-explanatory. So this little icon with a microphone under this arrow button, it's to mute or unmute the microphone. Right now, if you can see, the microphone have a little uh, red bar over it. It's muted. If I press again this arrow here, there we go, now it's unmuted. It's not easy to see but the red line, it's not over the microphone anymore. So you can quickly, it's like a quick access menu, access this uh, those menu with this button. For instance, oh, that is up here again. This little monitor means that you can turn on and off the screen, just the screen, not the camera, just the screen here on and off, pressing this button. This button will be the menu, it's M, so easy to remember. And this little button here, will be the play button. If you press it, you access the play menu of any file you have recorded in your dash cam, which will be also useful if you just came out of an accident and law enforcement want to see the video, you can play here the video. So you select OK, access all your little thumbnail video, and then with the button, you select which one you want to play. Remember, I set up three minute segments, so each of those videos are about three minutes and then you press OK when you want to play it. And remember also that you have one separate video for the back, which is this one, and one separate video for the front. Here we go, I was playing the back, and now I'm playing the front. So remember on your file, recorded file, one file will be the back, one file will be the front. They are not all together like you saw in the main screen. Let me go back there. You will not see that. Okay, the, this embedded image, picture in picture, with the back there and then the men here. Now you will see two different videos, 
in the quality recorded in the recorded resolution set here. So your main video will be in 4K and your back video will be in 1080p and there will be also full screen. Something interesting also to know about this dash cam is if you enable the screen saver and after the time you set the screen goes off. Let's do that manually here. Here we go. Uh, now you, there is no visible sign that the camera is still recording except here there will be a blue light under the camera here that will indicate that the camera is recording so that's good to go you can uh, safely drive with the screen off while being sure that your camera is still recording right there but enough with all the explanation uh, the camera works perfectly the menu works fine everything is good to go so now i'm going to install that in the car and see how it performs in the real world application which means while driving. Of course, I'm not going to show you how to install this camera in your car. I already did a video, a very uh, detailed video of how to install a dash cam in your car. You can see the link to this video right now and uh, also in the video description that will help you to find this video and uh, see in detail how to install your dash cam in your car. For now, I'm going to install this one and then I see you in a bit for the real driving application. All right, uh, everything is installed in the car now. The dash cam uh, is uh, mounted on the car and the rear camera is mounted on my rear windshield. And here we go, now driving. And let's see how this uh, dash cam perform. Uh, see if the 4K quality is worth the upgrade compared to regular 1080 HD dash cam. So here we go, now we have like uh, a little bit of BMW uh, tailgating me, so maybe you will be able to see it on the rear camera right now. I don't know if you can see the license plate of the car though. I'm not driving super fast here because it's a 35 uh, speed limit. But here we go. We have an idea of how the rear camera perform already. And now I'm going uh, toward a traffic light so I'm going to stop in front of a car ahead of me and that will uh, let you know how good the license plate uh, read is during the day so here we go I'm not tailgating too close a little bit closer this camera have a wide angle so it's not easy to see up close the license plate but hopefully it will be easier to read still the license plate of the car front of us here we go people don't know how to drive as usual that's why you need a dash cam guys <laughs> it's important for this purpose and remember if something happens you just have to press the button on the dash cam here to record to save your recording that way it's not going to be overwritten again another traffic light here so we're going to see if we can read the license plate of the car front of me and the BMW that was tailgating me in the same time. So plate front of me, there is a sun coming right on the camera lens, so that may not help. But in the same time, that will uh, let you know how good this camera is when the sun is shining right into it. And hopefully we got the plate, the license plate of the BMW behind me. So far, so good. Very crisp. Uh, LCD screen, I like that, and of course, with the sun shining in the camera, that will uh, give you an idea of how this camera perform in extreme condition, if I should uh, say so. We do still have the tailgating BMW, but I'm going to lose it very soon because I'm going to turn left here. Welcome to California, where people don't know how to drive. <laughs> now driving in a parking lot in a shopping center. Give you an idea of how this camera performs with less sun hitting the lens. And at the same time, if we can read some license plate around. Here we go. We have a better idea of how the dash cam uh, perform. Uh, here we go, and the car is backing up right there. 
two car backing up. <laughs> Again, that's why you need the dash cam. If anything happened right now with this car backing up, backing up right onto your car, you have a proof that it was not your fault. All right, I just turned the car around. So now I have the sun behind me which uh, should uh, make the plates, license plate reading better or easier for the dash cam. So let's see if that works. Now with the sun behind me, this one should be easier to read. And again, we are in uh, full daylight. It's uh, 2.14 in the afternoon. So it's not a very late evening or late afternoon, but the sun is behind me and here we go. That's how the dash cam perform and so far so good. I'm quite uh, impressed with it. Let's do a sound test, uh, test the son, sound test, one, two, three, sound test. That's the sound that's come from uh, my camera right there. Actually, I'm using my phone today. So that's the sound from my phone. And now that's the sound from the dash cam. Sound from the dash cam. How is the quality? One, two, three, four. Sound test, dash cam. Sound test, one, two, three, four. Let's see how the sound the recording, the audio recording is on the dash cam. All right, all good to go for the day uh, testing. So far, so good. Front and back camera have a good picture quality as you saw in my uh, testing. Now let's test the same system at night and see how this dash cam will perform in low light. Let's go. Because tonight it's Halloween. <laughs> it's not really Halloween, unfortunately, but it's the night. Uh, I wanted to test now this dash cam at night. So here we are. Hey, hop. Driving at night with the dash cam, see how it performs. Let's see how good or bad <laughs> it uh, registers the license plate of the car and how the picture quality is during the night. So, this uh, dash cam claims that uh, it has some enhanced night uh, video quality. So, we should uh, find out about that very soon. So far, everything seems okay. I don't see any car behind or front of me yet. We are going there soon to see how good uh, the license plate can be read. All right, here we go. At least the picture is clear. And now as for the license plate, here we have one. I read 6ENX722. Let's see if the dash cam captured that as well. license plates appear to have been a little bit altered so maybe it's not that easy for the dash cam to read it because it looks like some of the letters have been scratched out or scratched off in this case I'm going to find another car to test the camera with the, the back camera the rear camera will uh, probably not be able to read the license plate at night with the light from the car reflecting right in the camera but at least if something happened it will give me a video of the event like if now I'm braking and the car behind me uh, rear hand me I will have a video evidence of the incident so at least that should help but I expect the front camera to read the license plate here is a normal car with the normal license plate and Altair I read the 8 YCD886 Let's see if the dash cam capture that. The dash cam also should display the speed right now. My car says 50 miles an hour. So let's see if it's accurate. I'm around 50 miles. To try to be as accurate as possible. 50 miles here, let's see if the GPS is accurate and it should be display on the OSD, on-screen display information, along with the time and date of course. 
and here we go everything is set up everything works perfectly i'm very happy with this 4k dash cam i hope you will be happy with yours as well when you get it anyway thanks again for watching hope this video has been useful and see you next time bye bye Thank you.